Pinterest is an app that captures life's beauty and aesthetics in pictures. This is what we are aiming for, a summer you'd find on Pinterest. It turns out, life is not like Pinterest, and neither was that summer day. It was finally the day, the perfect way to end summer. Although, maybe perfect isn't the right word. It was around 3 in the morning, and I had just woken up to the irritating sounds of three or more alarms going off at once. I slightly opened my eyes to a hot, pitch-black dark room upstairs in my house, filled with five girls slowly waking up, annoyed and drowsy. I was uncomfortable and sweaty, but who wouldn't be when you're squished between two girls on a twin-sized mattress on the floor sharing two blankets? After a few minutes of laying there restlessly, someone stood up and turned on the light, intensifying the groaning and moaning noises. Once all of us gained enough strength to speak, we aggressively rambled on about our experiences of the little amount of sleep we got. Since we are on a time crunch, we shortly got up off the couch and floor to get ready to leave for the long three-hour car ride ahead of us. There was no turning back now. We, one by one, groggily walked downstairs to the comforting smell of hot coffee. As soon as we prepared our coffee and loaded up Nicole's, my sister's, gray Ford Freestyle, we were off. Six girls driving three hours at 3.30 a.m. to the beach. What could go wrong? Calm music filled the car as Nicole was driving, Mary sleeping in the passenger seat, Alex was reading, Hannah and Carrie in sleeping, and me on my phone. I spent most of the ride anticipating the beautiful sunrise and the fun day ahead of us. The closer we got to our destination, the more our expectations and anticipation plummeted. It was becoming light outside, but there was no sun. It was rainy, cloudy, and gray. I felt disappointed, but tried my best to stay hopeful. We eventually found a parking spot near the beach and all stepped out of the car to watch the non-existent sunrise we had planned for and waited to see for months. As I placed my feet on the wet ground, fresh air and salt water greeted my nose, and even though it didn't look how we hoped, I still felt peace and happiness. After watching dark rain clouds cr crowd the sky, we headed back to the car for plan B. We got into the car and all agreed that the day got off to a rough start, but we weren't going to let it ruin the rest of our girls' trip. We tried our best to stay hopeful, but sleep, deprivation, and hunger were overcoming us, making it harder to get along with each other. So we decided on getting breakfast. After fighting about where and what to eat, we traveled to a coffee shop that Carrie and picked out called Drift. Ate breakfast there, bought lunch for later at two different grocery stores, and drove back to the beach. It was now around noon, and finding parking was like a needle in a haystack, but after a long, stressful while of searching, screaming, parking, and walking, we were on the beach. As we were preparing our setup, the sweet sound of children playing and laughing, people talking, and waves crashing on the shore welcomed me. The sand squished between my toes and the heat of the sun peering out of the clouds patted my back as if reassuring, you made it, good job. I took a deep breath, then exhaled while the warm weather and cheerful noises surrounded me. Maybe this day won't be so bad after all, I thought. Eventually, the day was coming to an end and our energy drained from, all, from us along with the bright sunlight from the baby blue sky. We had already eaten the lunch we purchased earlier, but since it was evening, we needed to get food, food again. We were too worn out to argue about what each of us wanted, so we settled on McDonald's. After we ate dinner, it was time to leave. Before we started our journey home, we turned around and drove back to the beach for some pictures we forgot to take. As we were finishing up taking our pictures, Alex, growing more and more apprehensive, kept on urging us to hurry. Suddenly, she spoke up, her voice quivering with fear. Guys, we really should go. We told her to wait, but she persisted. No, like, we actually need to go. At this point, we all stopped what we were doing and attentively listened to her, the anxious look on her face reflecting on us. It's my mom, she told us, her eyes swelling with tears. 
She's really mad. She wants us to leave right now. When she spoke those words, we looked at the clock, realizing it was past the time we were supposed to leave to meet her mom. We all acted fast, jumping into the car like our life depended on it, because at that moment, they kind of did. Alex was now reading text between sobs. She said, I'm never going to be able to see you guys again after this. Our minds flooded with worried thoughts as we managed to comfort and calm her down. We didn't know what to do. There was nothing we could do other than drive and make sure she was keeping her mom updated. After a lot of tears and stress, the ride back was very silent, despite a few infrequent sniffles, low music, and heavy breathing from all of us sleeping. Everyone but Nicole, who was wide awake driving, her eyes cautiously glancing at the time now and then. Once we arrived at the meeting spot with Alex's mom, everyone woke up, faking smiles and saying goodbye to Alex and her mom, hoping we'd see her again before she turned 18. Now, looking back on this day, as chaotic as it was, we learned a lot of lessons along the way. Although the trip wasn't at all what summers on Pinterest looked like, that didn't matter. If anything, it made the trip more meaningful and memorable. Perfect definitely isn't the right word to describe it, at least not to other people, but it was perfect for us. Alright, that was it. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.